This is not how we thought we would be spending Christmas Eve. And I really hope that wherever you are, you are safe and warm. I had been so looking forward to being together in person tonight. COVID, of course, had forced us to worship online only for the past two Christmas Eves. But this year, it is the weather that has forced us back online. So here I sit with no power in the house, bringing you our Christmas Eve service online. Now, I know that many of us had planned more fulsome celebrations this year, our first year without COVID restrictions, but we have been reminded once again that even our best laid plans can go awry. When Advent began four weeks ago, and we began our Angels Among Us sermon series, I had a certain plan of how the season would play out. So I had all my charts and notes and ideas and dreams of how each Sunday leading up to this evening would progress. And then during week two of Advent, I got sick. Sicker than I have been for a long time with pneumonia, which was complicated by some nasty medication that my system just did not like at all. So that meant half of my charts and notes and ideas and dreams had to be scrapped. But you know what? Christmas still came. We are still here. Yes, in an online forum, but we are still here. And perhaps more poignantly than any sermon series could illustrate, the angels among us became visible. Ken Heron, who led our services during the past two weeks. Elaine and Jody, who tended to all of the details. All of you for your messages of support and comfort and healing. And especially my husband, John, who cared for me with great tenderness and love. Not all angels have wings. And Christmas reminds us that we are surrounded by angels all of the time, and we serve as angels whenever we share God's message of hope, peace, joy, and love with others. Now, Christmas may not be transpiring the way you thought it would this year. Maybe you didn't find that perfect gift yet, and I certainly hope you don't have to head out on the roads at all anymore. Maybe you've had to go with a different choice for Christmas dinner because turkeys are just too dang expensive this year. Or maybe your family has been impacted by sickness, loss, or grief. Maybe you'll be missing some loved ones at your celebration, people who are unable to travel due to this weather. But Christmas still came. It is here. There are angels among us, and we have gathered online to celebrate. And tonight, we're going to hear the stories of the angels, those angels who heralded incredible news that would change the world. News that would bring hope to the hopeless, peace to the downtrodden, joy to those in sorrow, and love to the forgotten. And these angels didn't appear to kings, queens, rulers, or high courts, or the privileged of society. These angels came to an old and barren couple, Zechariah and Elizabeth, a young girl, Mary, who was barely a woman, a simple and humble man, Joseph, betrothed to Mary, and finally, to lowly shepherds on a hillside. The angels came to people like you and like me. God worked through ordinary people and did extraordinary things. And so it is that God continues to work through us every time that we offer messages of hope, peace, joy, and love to an anxious world. The ancient message of the angels is a message for us tonight as well. Please join with me in prayer. God of mystery and wonder, God of light and love, on this holy night, the angels sing your praises with great joy the shepherds welcome your saving love born in a manger. 
Mary and Joseph ponder your promise cradled in their arms. And we gather, singing with the angels, amazed like the shepherds, cradling in our arms the promise of your love made visible in Jesus and made incarnate through us. Help us to experience the ancient stories of our faith with renewed vision and understanding. Fill us with wonder once again as we hear how love for the entire world became visible through a baby, a baby born into a tumultuous part of the world during a challenging time in history, so that we would know that you understand our challenges. You have experienced our worries and you continue to guide us to seek your way of peace, justice, compassion, and love for all people. And we pray this, joining our voices together with the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
We are Christmas people. We have heard the good news that a child has been born for us. A son has been given to us, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We, we have, have seen God kindle hope, peace, joy, and, and love in our lives and in our world. The center candle in our Advent wreath is the Christ candle. From this light, all good gifts come. We light this candle remembering the one who is the light of the world. Let us pray. Holy One, you send your Son as a baby born in Bethlehem. Give us a strong sense of his birth among us, so that our lives reflect the warmth and wonder of this Christmas flame, and make your church a place that shines with the wonder of your love. Amen. Well, this is our nativity scene that we have here at home. And you can see all the different characters from the Christmas story. Now, in amongst our nativity scene, you're going to see some things that maybe weren't in the original story. There's a lot of feathers here. And as we have been progressing through this sermon series called Angels Among Us, we have made note of feathers that help us remember that angels are with us at all time. The angels help tell the story of the very first Christmas. They appear to Mary and Joseph and to the shepherds to prepare them 
for something very special that was going to take place. To prepare them that a baby would be born who would change the way we think and the way we live. This baby would be Jesus, who would teach us that everyone, everywhere, is special and worthy of love and respect. The angels shared that message during the very first Christmas, and we're invited to share that message this Christmas. Now, before I got sick and had to miss a few Sundays, we talked about angels being messengers, and we looked at some sign language as a way of sharing messages. So the first Sunday of Advent was the Sunday of Hope, and we said that the sign for hope is this. You touch your head, and then your hands go together like that. In week two, we lit the candle of peace, and the sign for peace is this, which means be calm. Now, week three, and I wasn't there, unfortunately, because I was sick, that's when the candle of joy was lit, and the sign for joy is this. It's sort of like uplifting your heart, making your heart light and happy. And then last Sunday, we lit the candle of love, and this is the sign for love. Well, tonight we're going to learn the sign for welcome because I believe that God's message for us on this most special night is one of welcome. So here's the sign for welcome. You welcome somebody in. You just move your hand. It's like you're welcoming them in to your home, into your life, into your church, wherever you may be. Well, as we gather online on this special night to welcome Jesus, we remember that all of us are welcomed by a loving God. And that even though we may come from different places, different backgrounds, different experiences, together we share God's hope, God's peace, God's joy, and God's love. And we are all welcome here. We are welcome into God's presence wherever that may be. Now, when we are together in person again, you're going to receive a feather ornament. I had prepared feather ornaments to give out to any, everybody tonight. Uh, if you come to service tomorrow, if we're able to have service tomorrow, you'll be able to get one then. But whenever you're able to attend that Knox, I'll make sure that you get one of these feather ornaments. And the feather ornament reminds us that we are all angels sharing God's mes message of welcome, welcome. And we share that not only at Christmas, but throughout the entire year. The 
This is a story according to the messengers of God, present then and present now. We remember the angel appearance to Zechariah, husband of Elizabeth, and cousin to Mary. This angel foretold the birth of their son, John. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go for, before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so it was. Elizabeth, even in her old age, was finally pregnant with John, who would prepare a way for Jesus' teachings many years later. Let's sing together now the first Noel. The first Noel The angel did say Was to Bethlehem Shepherds in fields as they lay In fields where they lay Keeping their sheep On a cold winter's night That was so deep No months later in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, the heavenly messenger Gabriel made another appearance. This time, the messenger was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary 
who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David himself. The messenger entered her home and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, who you will name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. At first perplexed by this, Mary resolved to offer herself as the vessel through which more love was born into the world. We're going to sing together now, What Child Is This? What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, who angels greet? say her betrothed needed some encouragement too for becoming pregnant before their marriage was a serious offense in the eyes of the community so a message was needed for Joseph as well Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit she will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins All this takes place to fulfill what has been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And so Joseph stood by Mary, and she grew with the presence of God within her. Long ago in Bethlehem, the tiny babe was born. He nestled in his mother's arms on that first Christmas morn. Let me hold him, Joseph said, I'll support his head. Mary passed the child to him, and this is what she said. Now, Joseph, don't drop the baby, the Messiah's in your hands. 
Joseph, don't drop the baby, you'll ruin all God's plans. Your hands are big and he is small, please don't let him fall. Joseph, don't drop the baby, the Messiah's in your hands. Free the land from Herod's wrath, the angel said to them. Off to Egypt they did go, leaving Bethlehem. On his shoulders Joseph placed his infant son so dear. Mary followed after them and called out loud and clear. Now Joseph, don't drop the baby, the Messiah's in your hands. Joseph, don't drop the baby, you'll ruin all God's plans. Your hands are big and he is small, please don't let him fall. Joseph. Don't drop the baby, the Messiah's in your hands. We are called to bear his name and carry out his will. Called to shoulder our own cross, his purpose to fulfill. Called to live in peace and love. Called to run our race. Called to share our lives with him, strengthened by his grace. So, sister, don't drop the baby, his word is in our hands. Brother, don't drop the baby, we're part of God's great plans. The word of God, that little boy, we carry forth with joy. We will not drop the baby, his word is in our hands. The story continues. In those days... A decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. We'll sing together now, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angels said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, and you are the multitude of messengers who have gathered this night from your various locations to proclaim this good news. And all the angels of God praised God and said, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace and goodwill among all people. The message of the angels to Elizabeth, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds is the message to us tonight as well. Through the baby in the manger, God has shown us the way of love for all people. And now we are called to continue sharing the message of the angels, remembering that not all angels have wings. We have heard on high Sweetly singing all the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing the joyous strains Glory in excelsis
Please join with me now for the prayers of the people. God of light and love, God of Christmas, in this season we give you thanks that your love became visible in the birth, life, and ministry of Jesus. And once again, we are in awe that his story still calls us to change the world, to change the world by proclaiming and living his teachings of peace, justice, compassion, and acceptance for all people. In a time when so many are feeling rejected, outcast, and forgotten, help us proclaim with the angels your message of peace and goodwill intended for all people. With all the uncertainty about travel in this season, caused by the weather and also caused by our ongoing concerns about illness, we remember Mary and Joseph and their journey in the midst of another busy time. Watch over all who travel, traveling for happy reasons or in the face of difficulties. May they find your peace in the midst of their journey. As we remember the innkeeper who found space for Mary and Joseph, we're grateful for the spaces that we call home, where hopefully we are home safe and warm this evening. And we pray for all those without a place to call home and those who are seeking welcome in strange places. May they find an open door and kindness within. As we remember the shepherds watching over their flocks, we give you thanks for those who watch over us this night. We pray for all those who must work on holidays, clearing our treacherous roads, tending to the well-being of others, watching over us and our loved ones. May they know a blessing in the services they provide and our gratitude for their efforts. And as we remember the angels and their message of peace and goodwill, we're grateful for peace and order in our communities. And we pray for all those who work to establish and maintain peace in troubled places and troubled lives. We long for the day when all weapons would be laid down, when harsh words would be silenced, and when your peace would descend upon all nations. God, hear these prayers and all the silent prayers of our individual hearts and cradle them and us in your grace and love. Amen. Now we're going to sing together, Joy to the World. Go now into the magic and mystery of this glorious night 
being angels, messengers of God's joy for the entire world, made visible through the baby in the manger who would become the light of the world. Go in hope, peace, joy, and love, and Merry Christmas to you and to all whom you love. Amen.